Welcome back everybody, it's HBCU Overdrive with your boy Doc Holliday. And if you want to become an overdriver, please like, comment, share, but most importantly, subscribe. And now further ado, let's get into what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about a mental health checkup. I want to know if anybody in the HBCU world has what they call a mental health checkup. Because we all need it. We all need it. I needed it one time when I was at Jackson State. So um, it's a good thing to have. And remember, this is mental health, uh, mental health Awareness Month for the whole month of June. So, you know, that's one of the things that I pride myself on, uh, that I look, uh, look up to. Uh, I don't see anybody as being uh weird or crazy or anything like that when they figure out that sometimes you have a mental breakdown you have depression you know you just don't understand what's going on with your within your life so that's when you kind of have a mental health checkup so you kind of rate yourself between one and ten one meaning that you're cool, you're calm, you collect it in 10, meaning that you need the help, you need the help ASAP. So, my mental health checkup, my rate uh, today would be at a three. I'm calm, cool, collected, but because my fiance is in the hospital uh, where she had a procedure done, then she had to have follow -up, uh, a follow-up procedure, it kind of got to me because I can't be there with her like I want to be there with her. So, but I fully support what she's going through. Um, but let me go ahead and give a special shout out to Jaron Williams. Now, Jaron Williams is a four-star quarterback that played at the University of Miami. He transferred to Alabama and m University this past spring and he was slated to be in the starting run as far as being starting quarterback for the Bulldogs this year. What I saw on Twitter today pretty much made me proud of him because I felt like he took matters into his own hands, took control of his life and knew when he needed the help to make sure, you know, that his mind is going to be at ease. So I commemorate him for basically what he did was he retired from football to focus more on his mental health. We all need that sometimes. Not saying as far as quitting something to focus on your, your health, your mental health, but we all need to t just kind of take a break a mental health break to where we won't go haywire let me just put it like that so I have a story right uh, for everybody um, it involves me um, so I've been clinically diagnosed with depression since 2005 but it goes much further to like 1991, 92. And this is a couple of years after my father passed away. So I, at that time, at being at a young age, I didn't know what depression was about. I didn't know what how depression was. I didn't know what mental health was. It was pretty much at that time, you're looking at in the early to late, not the early to mid nineties, mental health, depression being as a stigma towards black people. Like, you don't, you, you know, it, it, it's, it's a taboo. But I carried this all the way through high school and through college. And the reason why, how I carried that is I masked, I masked everything. I didn't really tell anybody about what was going on that was going on in my mind. Um, I didn't tell 
my family about what I was going through, how I was feeling and everything, because I didn't want to be labeled like that. I didn't want to, I didn't want the label to, to be hung over my head. So I carried this all through high school. I carried this all through college. So one day I'm at home. I wanted to go out with my, with my siblings. Uh, I'm not really too much big of a club person or anything like that. But back when I was in college, I, I, I did go out a lot. So I'm not going to even sugarcoat that. But at that time, I didn't really see it being something that I would want to do all the time. So pretty much I stayed to myself. I didn't know who to talk to. I didn't know who to turn to. So I tried to go out, drove, and let me tell you, it was the worst. That was pretty much the worst day of my life. And the reason why I say it's the worst day of my life because I tried to take my life. I try to take my own life and I'm going to tell everybody if it wasn't for my best friend and she's been my best friend going on for 20 years now I wouldn't be here talking to y'all telling you my story about what's going on with me so my mental health break was I ended up going into a psychiatric treatment, the psychiatric ward. And I was in there for about five days. And within those five days, the first day and a half, I really didn't want to be bothered. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I wanted to stay in my room. I wanted to sleep. I just wanted to stay in my room. Only time I got out of my room was to eat and to do observation with the doctors. Other than that, I didn't want to be bothered with nobody. So, telling my mother, telling my grandmother, telling my, my, my aunt, my uncle, my stepfather at the time about what I was going through, my sisters, you know, what I was going through at the time, they didn't cast any kind of, of of cloud of judgment over my head they was there to support me through everything that I was going through and my my family is a big believer of faith and through faith and prayer and asking God for forgiveness for mercy for sympathy empathy I got through it but there are times when I'm let you know that I do go through spells where you know I get down on myself and that's okay because we're human we're all human so for Mr. Williams to go and announced that he's taking a break from football or retiring from football. That's something that he loved. That's something that he been playing since he was a, you know what I'm saying, a toddler, a, 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 a mini-me. All the way up until now to focus more on his mind, more on his mental health. And sometimes we all need to have, we, we, we need to have that. We need to have that in, in in our arsenal, we need to have that in 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 our everyday life. I have that every day in my everyday life, and so what I do is now I talk to a psychiatrist. I talk to, to psychologists. Um, I do take necessary prescription um, to deal with uh, my depression. Um, but I also have a team of people that's, that I surround myself that is positive and that's there to motivate me. But 
I have to be able to motivate myself to get myself be better and to live for my kids and for my family and stuff like that. And also mainly for myself. So like I said, I commend Mr. Williams about how he went about tackling this problem that he knew that he had for so long, but he might not have anybody he can go to at the time to make sure that whatever he was going through, he get the necessary help. So I commend, I commend him. So what are some of the things that you can do for yourself in order for you to be productive? So one is, like I said, surround yourself with like-minded people. Surround yourself with people that bring in the energy, the passion about life. Because if you don't have that, if you don't have that, you're not going to survive out here. And that's point blank, period. You don't have that, that energy, that positive energy. You're not going to survive. Two, find you a doctor that you can confide in, that you can confide in to talk about what is going on with yourself. And you can go in person to, to the doctor or you can go on Teladoc. That's what I do. I go on Teladoc. I do it through my insurance, uh, through my job. And I talk to a doctor, let them know, like, hey, this is how I'm feeling today. Uh, what are some points where I can get myself through this without relapsing. That's the main thing, not to relapse. Number three, if you need it, get the medication that you need. Trust me, it's going to help. It is going to help you. Don't believe the the naysayers about it's not doing anything. It's going to help you. People who say stuff like that are not the ones that's going to be in your corner when you have an episode or when you're feeling down. They're the ones to tear you down. So, and number four, make sure that you pray, you give thanks, you, 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 Basically, make sure that you are a spiritual spiritual person, you know, because without the man up above, if you believe in God, Allah, Buddha, whatever your religion is, make sure you praise them and say, I thank you, thank you for waking me up this morning and finding me along my way. That's something that you need that you need that every day in, in in your arsenal to fight mental health. And don't get it twisted. Mental health is not somewhere you just it, it just goes it, like eh, it goes away. It doesn't work like that. Mental health, this is like mental illness is a real illness. Let's get that straight. Mental illness is a real illness. So, so don't downplay something like that where you, you, you know, you like, hey, it's nothing. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get through this day. And then you have a breakdown for real. And then I'm going to be the one reading about you on the news, on YouTube, on TikTok, Instagram. You know, Snapchat, whatever. Don't fall for the don't fall for the okie doke. That's all I say. You know, that's what I gotta say. And like I said, if you, as far as 
being a student at an HBCU, what are some things that you do when you feel like your mind is not at ease? So if you have something like that, if you got some ideas, put them in a comment. Share it with me. You know what I'm saying? I'd be very happy to be there and help you or ask if you need the help because I don't want nobody, especially kids that the kids that go to these universities now, colleges and universities, I don't want you to go through what I went through without telling nobody for so long and it becomes a bigger problem. It's so crazy about I, I didn't even tell none of my friends from from Jackson State about what I was going through until probably about like a couple of years ago. And I wasn't looking for sympathy or anything like that. I just wanted to them to understand like this is what I was going through. And I didn't know who to talk to. Even though these been my boys, my friends for well over 25 years it was kind of hard for me to talk to them about that. But I hope this show gets out to everybody and I hope that everybody listens to what I had to say and my story. But again, this is your boy Doc Holiday with another episode of HBCU Overdrive. Remember to like, comment, share, and most of all, subscribe. Y'all have a blessed day. Peace out.